one. And we're back. Thank you, everybody, for for joining us. Fatso Radio, episode number 52. And tonight I have a very special guest, Farah Green. Farah, welcome to the show. I'm so happy, so happy to have you. Yes, I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, folks, Farah has a book, 12 Steps to Your Body of Gold. Is that right, Farah? 12 Steps to Your Body of Gold. And she has a really interesting story. So, Farah, if you can just kind of give our listeners a little bit of background of yourself, of course, and then we'll definitely get into the book and then, you know, some advice and we'll, we'll, just, we'll just see where this goes. So, thank you. Yeah, ab- absolutely. So, hey, y'all. <laughs> so, if you don't know me, like um, Carlo had stated, my name is Farah Green. I am a certified exercise nutrition coach and I am a body activist and I'm now an author. So basically the reason why um, I decided to write this book is because of my background and some of the things that I've gone through throughout my health and wellness journey. And I basically became a certified nutritionist simply because I wanted more women to understand that there is more to health than just eating right and exercising. There is a self-love component that goes into the healing process and going into your health and wellness journey in order to accomplish your goals. And the reason why I started teaching women that is because I, for one, went through my own personal journey of going through depression, um, having suicidal thoughts, not wanting to exist, um, having breakdowns at work. And I remember going to the gym every single morning at 6 a.m., running there and back. And I would do circuit training. And during that year, I could not lose one pound. And it was simply because I was going through mental turmoil. And it was as if my mind and my body was having this physical fight. They were not on the same page with each other. And as a result, I pulled myself out of depression. I started, you know, really honing in on my internal feelings and doing the internal work that needed to happen in order for me to later have run 10 5Ks and 10Ks in the year 2018 and completed my first half the year of 2019. So I'm just here to really spread the love as to why I'm so passionate about body positivity and health. Because in order to conquer both, it all stems from self-love. Absolutely. And uh, just to add to that, I mean, thank you. First of all, thank you for telling your story. I mean, it, it definitely speaks volumes to me. And, and you know, it's funny. Um, so many similarities, of course, I'm, I'm a male, but growing up, you no, know, definitely similar similarities. Yeah. Of, you know, I was heavy my whole life and dealing with the, the whole idea of just not loving yourself. And it's funny, I often tell people a story that I used, I used to work at a gym selling memberships and I couldn't lose a pound. I was working out five days a week. But it's like yeah. you said, it's all about that mindset. It's all about having kind of the right levers pulled at the right time, right? A lot of times it is timing. A lot of times it is um, kind of happenstance. Like you said, when you find the right inspiration or when you, find, uh, when, the, when you find the right plan. You know, it's funny. I heard something on a podcast today. Basically, any diet outside mm-hmm. of the standard American diet will work, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> basically, any diet tells you to stop eating what yeah. the food guy tells you almost. So it's like, yeah. uh, you know, and, but it, but it kind of brings back to the idea that like, it's, um, it, it's more than just what's on your plate. And it's more than just what you do at the gym, like you said, and I want to get into that. It's, it's about family, right? It's about community. I mean, the, the old saying, you know, it takes a village. I really believe that. And I think you believe that as well, obviously, because yes. we're, we're building our village, right? When I mean, we're, we're supporting it. Um, now, what is the, it's funny, because what do you, for you at least, what, what was it that, what was that trigger? What was the thing that kind of, you know, turned the light on that, that switched gears or helped you switch gears to say, okay, either enough is enough or did you find the right inspiration somewhere? Um, there's always something, right? And yeah. I don't know. There, there is always something. And, um, you know, growing up as a kid, I've always like struggled with my weight. Um, I was very active. I would consider myself still an athlete because I was always like in cheer and we would just wasn't no like regular cheerleading team. We literally would go to competitions and compete and I would go through a lot of training, but I was just always like the chubby one. You know, when I look back at my pictures now, I'm like, I wasn't that chubby, but during that time, right. During that time you feel as though like 
you were always the chubbiest one in the group because you were, I was constantly being teased as well. So that had an effect on my body image. And so as I got older, um, I remember my, my last year of college, I had decided to lose some weight before graduation. And I lost the weight. I lost maybe like nearly 40 pounds and I was in pretty, pretty good shape, but I lost the weight for all the wrong reasons. And when I later moved to Seattle, Washington to pursue a career at the time as a digital consumer, um, a digital consumer producer at a news station, that's when my health started going downhill. And that's when I realized that weight loss couldn't keep me happy. It couldn't solve my insecurities. I had to learn how to naturally be happy with myself within. And because I wasn't, I also was having mental breakdowns, right? Like I mentioned before, the suicidal thoughts and not wanting to exist and having, you know, crying myself to sleep. And, you know, it, it was really, really tough for me. And at the same time, I was also planning my dream wedding because my fiance at the time, well, you know, had, had proposed, which is now my husband. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And um, I did not know how to be enough for myself and enough for him. And so as a woman, you oftentimes think like, okay, this is my shape. This is my body. I'm not really happy with it. And so how am I supposed to be enough for me and this other person that I'm about to marry? Mm -hmm. And so while I was going through my internal emotions and fighting the battle between my mental and physical being, well being, I remember after leaving Seattle, Washington and I being able to lose a pound, even after I lost, you know, didn't lose any weight and going to the gym every day, I remember moving to California and I sat on the edge of my bed and I said, there has to be something more to my life <laughs> and my health than just weight loss. I need to do something. I need to do something that does not deal with me looking at the scale every day and monitoring the scale every day and feeling like my self-worth is defined by that number on the scale every single day. Totally. So that's when I started getting up and running. I just started running. And that's when that's when I started competing in 5Ks and 10Ks and competing, you know, in my first half marathon because it was the moment where I was like, okay, enough is enough. Like health isn't just about <clears throat> the number one scale. Health isn't just about how skinny or lean I am. Health is really about me being happy. And I was not happy. And after for a, for a whole year and not being able to lose weight up until my wedding day, that's when I realized I had a problem. And that's when I realized, okay, Farah, you have to do some internal healing in order to better your health. And so that's when I went along my journey of running. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So it's funny. So you weren't a runner. I mean, an athlete, like you said, but but you just picked it up. And maybe that's a testament of how we have it all in us. Do you believe that? I don't know. <laughs> Yes. Um, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. Every year, I remember being in high school, and every year I would try for track. And by the second mm. or third week, you would not find me at any practice, mm. meet, or nothing. I would quit oh. every year. <laughs> every year I would try to go for it, and I'm like, dang, this is not for me. Yeah. And I would, I, I just quit. But it's so weird when I tell people, like, look, I wasn't an athlete to an extent of I was, you know playing basketball or mm. you know I was on a volleyball team but that doesn't require too much running but even being on track I would start it and <clears throat> start it and quit it started and put it so I found like how did I become this runner like how did I just start running out of nowhere and I think for me it was more so I started running because I was chasing freedom I was chasing, chasing freedom from like all the baggage that I felt in terms of me feeling like I wasn't good enough. Mm -hmm. And so running became my outlet because I felt free at that moment. I felt like I can just do anything. And as a result of me running, my body transformed. It yeah. not just physically, 
but mentally too. And that's when I also fell in love with weightlifting. But we'll go in that go into that later. But yeah, that's interesting I, that you mentioned. Yeah, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, no, but I would honestly like I always tell people that you know any woman or any body really, literally any body, and I'm saying anybody and everybody is capable of being an athlete. It doesn't matter how old you are. And you have athletic capabilities. You just have to tap into it and no longer use the word can't. Because once again, there has to be something out of weight loss that will keep you going, keep you motivated, and keep you active. If it's not competing in races, then it could be something as simple as your children or you wanting to lower your A1C level or you no longer wanting to be a pre-diabetic or you no longer want to fight with this chronic illness, like let that fuel you. Use that as a fuel to keep going and to better your health. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you mentioned the, um, just the, 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 the running. And it's funny, I hear that from, from a lot of people. I'm not a runner, not yet, cross my fingers, hopefully one day. <laughs> but I hear that from a lot of people that there's something about it. Maybe it's the, the meditation type Zen, maybe flow type state that you get into, you know, in a long run. But I've heard that people, you know, okay, you can kind of work out some stuff, you know, we got some housekeeping some, sometimes, you know, in our, in our, in our minds. And would you, would you say that's accurate? Yeah. Cause you feel like nothing else really, really matters at that point when I'm in a race and I'm like trying to also beat my time from like the last race or I'm in a race and you know, it's an obstacle course. Mm. It's like, you know, I got to make it to the finish line. I can't walk all the way back. So, <laughs> you know, I got to keep going. So it's kind of like, you know, one your mind is free of all the problems that you're dealing with in life because you're just like, I got to make it to the finish line. That's what I'm focused on. You're so focused on finishing. And then two, you're kind of able to like clear your head because you're so focused on getting to that finish line. And at that moment, even though there's other runners around you, it shows that you're competing with yourself. You're competing to beat yourself every single time because it's almost as if you're running towards the person that you're ultimately becoming, right? That you ultimately want to become and be the best version of yourself. That's what you're running towards. So it's not necessarily like, oh, I'm running and I'm tired and this is exhausting. If you think about it that way, then it is going to be tiring. It is going to be exhausting and you're not going to want to run. But when you think about it in a sense of you running towards freedom or you running towards becoming the best version of yourself and competing with yourself, you have a different outlook and that will get you up every day to start running. Yeah, absolutely. I can definitely attest to that as well. A few months back now, I want to say maybe in the end of August, I started doing push-ups in the morning. I started doing crunches in the morning. I started doing some squats and I started putting on Instagram. Oh my God, I started my 20, 20, 20. I was doing, you know, push-ups, crunches, and squats. And I did 30 push-ups and then I moved up to 40. And then my right. brother jumped in. He's like, oh, let's do 50. So I'm at 50. Last month I jumped up to 60. So, but I definitely know what you mean because A, I'm doing it to hopefully motivate other people and my friends, my family, all the loved ones, you know, but also it, that keeps me going because now I'm like, Hey, I did this yesterday. I can't stop. Right? right. So it's almost like that little game we play with ourselves as well. And like you said, there's nothing wrong with being competitive with yourself. There's nothing. Yeah. I mean, that's how we get, that's what we get to our goals. Right. And that's how we get to our, yeah. you know, our, our end game. But, but yeah, it's interesting you say that because we, we kind of build on. So, so you're running five K's and 10 K's both. Is that, yeah. how, how does that happen? Was, Just kind of wherever you find them or. Yeah. So I was living in California at the time and I remember running my first five K and I ran that race by myself and it was a mud run. So oh. it, different obstacles and I did it by myself I did not care I was like I'm gonna go out here I was so nervous I was so scared that morning I didn't know <laughs> I didn't know how well I was gonna do but during that race I also met two other amazing women who had a running group and then once we started talking at that moment they added me to their Facebook group and they would pick up runs every month Nice. And so they would have a whole calendar year, maybe about like 20 different runs that were going on during the year. And every month I made it my duty to compete in a race, one race per month. Mm 
And so I would make sure that at least I had like four weeks to kind of like train and build my momentum up. And then I would start back all over again and do it all over again every month. If, if not every month, then every other weekend. Sometimes I had two races per month. It just depend. It just was dependent upon what was going on in that area because I was living in San Diego at the time. Okay. And because it's warm all year round, um, <laughs> you can have runs all year round, yeah. honestly. That's nice, That's yeah. Like one of the best ways to get out and get active. That's awesome. Yeah, like for, I mean, a simple thing that I've done, you know, since over the last couple of years now that I've been I have a fairly recent job, uh, just at lunchtime, I was going out and starting walking, right? It started out with just, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour, going for an hour. Um, and even something like that, like you said, just keeps you out there and, and, it's, and it gets you outside, you know, fresh air. Um, and I mean, yeah, exercising outside is the best thing. Uh, now, you have a question for you. Now, now that you've seen success, right? So it's been, has it been a few years since your journey now or how, how long has it been? Yeah. So, um, one, I would say my journey started like when I was a teenager. Yeah. So, bro. <laughs> when a I was, year or so, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, when I was a teenager, I was always like, you know, working out. I would work out two times a day, yeah. um, measuring my food, making sure I was intaking the right amount of calories. Like, I, I, I've been on some, some crazy diets yeah. um, as a teen and being a college student as well. Mm. Um, but I would say I really, really started taking my journey seriously. I was always into health, wellness, and fitness and nutrition. But I really started taking my journey seriously back in um, 2016, between 2016 and 2017, simply because that was the time that I had a major depression. That was the time where I, I was, it was bad. Um, I sometimes I mean, it was right, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so... During that time, it made me realize that once again, I needed to do some cool. internal healing because for the longest, I was chasing the number and I wasn't chasing really how to be healthy. Mm. So that's when my journey really started. Okay. I was able to accomplish a lot by running, by meditating, by just, you know, creating a way of self-love. Mm -hmm. And that's when... I decided like, okay, I can do this and I can teach yeah. other women to do the same because I'm not the only woman that's struggling with this. Absolutely. So I overcame it. I did it. Now it's time for me to live out really and truly live out my purpose um, of breaking generational curses of disease among women, especially among women of color, because um, we have the highest risk in, in everything, um, any disease that you see really, we're the highest. And so that's when I really, yeah, that's when I really started taking my journey seriously and realized that my main purpose was to really teach people about health, nutrition, wellness, and about body positivity. And so, nice. yeah, the year of 2016, 2017 was the time that I was like, okay, this is my yeah. time. Absolutely. Now, Farrah, what can, can you tell me what now looking back now were there some common mistakes that you were making i know look I, there's definitely some things i was making mistakes where i thought hey I, you know do this do this you know the guy said this the guys at the gym would say that but yeah uh, and they never saw results with them but are there anything that maybe you can share with our, my listeners definitely my female listeners i mean i'm blessed with having two sisters a ton of female cousins um and mm -hmm. likes like sisters to me as well but and and many of them as well lesson but um yeah is there anything that you can share with like maybe some some mistakes that you used to make and used to maybe even dwell on because i know that in the past i used to obsess about certain things too yeah i would say one of the common mis mistakes and people may think this is weird or crazy but one of the mistakes that i really really um messed up <laughs> at was um measuring every single food like Yep. Look, yes. I, would, I, would, I would I would be in my kitchen. And I remember graduating the, grabbing the measuring cup to measure how much progresso soup. And you know, okay. <laughs> You're talking to an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> now, anybody know progresso soup, right? A lot of them sometimes be like 80 calories per can or 80 calories per serving, a half a cup, a cup, depending on what flavor you get. And at the age of, had to be like 16, 17, I was literally in my kitchen grabbing a measuring cup and was measuring a half a cup, measuring a cup. And I'm just like, what am, you know, what am I doing? Like, am I that obsessed 
over calories mm. to a point where I'm measuring soup. Soup, that's one of the, it, it's water. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, mostly water, right? Right. Why, why am I, why am I doing this? So that was a major mistake. Um, and that crippled me to think that I couldn't eat the things that I really wanted to eat. I couldn't still eat the things that I loved. I couldn't enjoy life. Mm -hmm. um, that crippled me a, a lot. Um, another common mistake that I feel as though that I made is playing myself every single day. Mm -hmm. I weigh myself every single day as soon as I woke up in the morning. And if I went up a pound, I would beat myself up. But the truth of the matter is you have to give your body time to develop. You have to give your body time to adjust to the new nutrition plan that you're given. Um, you just have to be patient with your body because you don't know how your body is going to react. You don't know, especially if you are someone who really doesn't even know your body type. Like the reason why a lot of us struggle with accepting our bodies for what they are and how they function and how they, you know, burn food and our relationship with food is off is simply because we don't know our body type. And we can dive more into that later, but yeah. it requires like a lot of scientific stuff. Mm. <laughs> but um, that was another common mistake that I, that I did make was um, we mess up every morning. And the last common mistake that I made was trusting fitness coaches to give me a nutrition plan and they gave me the plan and I had success but they didn't teach me in the process of how to accept my body mm. so that's what I that's what I like to say to people is that before you go and pick a nutrition coach fitness coach mm. ask them are you going to teach me how to also accept my body? Mm. Are you going to teach me along the journey? Are you going to tap into my childhood traumas? Are you going to help me overcome those things through my workout, through my plan, through our one-on-one -on -one sessions? Mm. So that when you're gone and you're no longer my coach, I can still be healthy and keep the weight off. Yeah. And if that coach says, no, that's not, in their job title or that's not their role or you need a therapist then you need a different coach that's just just as simple so that's the third biggest advice or third biggest mistake <laughs> that yeah. i made well i can tell you on that third point i mean definitely 100 percent, i agree and, and on that third point it's I, I almost think that it's going to be a, a new industry, right? Or, or basically it's going to make the industry itself evolve, right? Because it is about the holistic. I mean, I know that coin phrase, you know, holistic, but it really is the whole package, right? It's more yeah. than just your exercise. It's more than just the food. It's more than um, just what, like you said, weighing yourself every day. Oh my God, I did that for months and months. And I think I caused more stress than any yes. good at all. You know, especially with water, my God, like we learning, like you said, learning how your body works, learning how it's just biology. I mean, mm -hmm. going through a journey, you learn, a lot about your body but you learn that like a couple pounds no problem i can oh my god i can gain 10 pounds in a day almost of water now i'm learning right so yeah wow. definitely and then and then even just learning like how your body plays with with salt and sugar and things like that it's fun, weird one of the weird things i've learned or one of the interesting things i've learned is that your body actually retains more water um, and more fluid when you, when you have more sugar in your body more than salt you know salt's been demonized forever right uh, salt's the bad guy um <clears throat> you know, it retains water, it's bad for your blood pressure and all that stuff. And I've learned that I've actually had to add a lot of salt to my diet now because I'm on mm -hmm. a very low carbohydrate diet. My body doesn't retain the water that it actually needs. Where years right. ago, I had way too much water. Um, right. just, just inflamed, really just bloated kind of all the time. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's really interesting is, you know, learning that balance, but learning yourself, you know. Um, yeah. And then, like you said, going back to the whole idea of that, you know, real food and all that. Um, one of the things that I always tell, you know, people when they ask me for other advice is, um, I, I always say, keep it simple, right? And mm -hmm. by, by alone, keeping it simple, um, people don't really understand. But what I mean, keep it simple is what you touched on. Don't even have to cut calories for, for the most part. If you're having, yeah. if your diet is, you, know, you do have to formulate, in my opinion, a, a well-formulated diet with, you know, certain macro types are really important. Yeah. Because in my opinion, if you have your macros, right, we have a fair amount of fat, a fair amount of protein, 
you know, in a lower amount of carbohydrates, I think that type of diet is actually going to keep you satisfied, right? It's showing yeah, a lot it of kind of keeps you satisfied. And, and that's why people are going, trying to go into the you know, one meal a day and the, the, you know, intermittent fasting and window eating. And I think that, you know, the one meal a day, the old mad, a lot of people are doing that and the intermittent fasting paired up with keto is I think, or with a low carb, not even just keto, but low carb approach really works because one of the things that I think people, um, especially these days, you know, uh, people mm-hmm. get into the weeds with the whole fasting and this diet and people are trying keto and they're losing like 50 pounds in a month and it's blowing people's right. minds. Everybody expects these results, right? But one of the things I think people uh, have to kind of remember is that it takes time. You have to build this, you know, this routine, you know, we're, we're, we're creatures of habits and we work best, for me, I work best when I'm in my habit or I'm in my routine. Um, whether you know it's obviously a good habit um, but yeah so I think definitely when you're when you're mentioning like uh, don't get too much caught up on things like calories which I mean I have a whole problem with calories in calories out anyway because it's all about hormones and insulin and it's all about that right so uh, and you touched on the a1c you touched on the insulin resistance and blood sugar like that in my opinion is really the crux of, of, of all of this problem right um, yeah. you know if we could as a, as a as a culture as a society as a world if we could just get a better handle on our blood sugar. I know it sounds simple, but really just get a handle on our blood sugar. It makes everything different. Um, right. And one of the ways to do that is just dramatically lowering the amount of processed food and all that processed food is usually carbohydrates. Right. Um, but like you said, without, you know, going too much into food, cause like I said, every, every month, every week I'm banging the drum on the food. Right. What, what else can you, can you share with me as far as um, maybe some tips or, or what do you mean by you say when, when you say, um, investigate the things that are helping or preventing you from self-love maybe, right. Or holding you back from really enjoying the body and the, in the, in the, I guess the, the, really the beautiful person that we are. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. What, what holds us back? Um, I honestly think a lot of the things that hold us back has everything to do with our upbringing, has everything to do with how we were raised um, in a household, the way that our family and friends around us view food growing up. Um, you watch your parents' relationship with food, whether or not you realize it. Mm-hmm. Over time, you also knew some of the health issues that were going, or going you know, around with your family and how from generation to generation to generation, health was just really, really declining. Um, and so, you kind of, you kind of know when, you know, when, when something isn't right, when you start seeing this, this pattern. And this is one of the things that I talk about in my book and the first intro where I say like the women in my family, I watch them fight. I watch them fight for their lives and I watch them fight cancer, diabetes, hypertension, um, strokes. Like I watch them fight with all these illnesses and it wasn't the fact that it was really like related to weight. It wasn't, it wasn't, that wasn't solely like the issue. Um, because one of the things that I do promote is that you can be a curvy plus size woman and still be healthy compared to a woman that's thin and consuming the wrong things. And that's why their health is struggling. So it wasn't just the weight that was holding them back it was really knowing how to love their bodies and so because of trauma because of um lack of knowledge because of you know what's really affecting your environment day in and day out and how that's translating into your mind that affects how you view yourself as an individual and that affects how you love yourself as a person because when you practice body positivity which body positivity is basically you truly loving every imperfection of you that means you truly loving the size of your stomach you're loving your voluptuous thighs your hips your bust your your double chin your neck whatever it is is that body positivity is knowing that you truly love all of these imperfections, even though that you later want to change, but you accept yourself for who you are in the moment. And you are confident about who you are in the moment. And so that confidence then translate to you wanting to do better by your body. And so as a result, you start to eat the right foods. You start to love on your body more because you find that you're worthy 
of living a healthy and fulfilled life. And once you get that, you know, mindset and start looking at your body differently, the health will come. You improving your health will come. The weight loss, your weight will begin to drop because you've accomplished that sense of confidence, that sense of self-love, and once again, accepting your body for what it is to later be whole and healthy and live a healthy and fulfilled life. I remember teaching a workshop and one woman told me, she said, when I look in the mirror, I see the word ill. Like I just see ill. And it's like ill, the, you know, like that's not even a word. That's like a, yeah. like a, ugh. you know what I mean? She mm-hmm. said, that's what I see when I look in the mirror. And, and I'm like, wow, like, why, like, why do you feel that way? She was like, yeah, cause I just don't like how I look. I, I don't like my, my body. I, I just need to find my in between. Mm-hmm. And I said, girl, in order for you to find your in between, you have to love yourself for who you are now. You have to love yourself for who you are today. And later you were then able to find your in-between. You will then be able to find your in-between because you love yourself for who you are right now. And as a result of you loving yourself for who you are now, again, you're going to want to do right by yourself. And because you're doing right by yourself, you will then be able to improve your health and get better. But if you stuck in that mindset of you're not worthy and just ill and you're just disgusted about what you see when you look in the mirror, you will constantly have this battle of trying to lose weight. You lose the weight, then you gain it. Why? Because weight loss doesn't solve insecurities. That's right. It doesn't. No, you're right. You have yeah. to dig deep. You have to dig deep when it comes to your childhood, when it comes to your environment, when it comes to your 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 role as a mom, as a as a father, as a wife, as a husband, as a brother, as a coworker, as an employee, like you have to know your environment and how it impacts your health. And so once you realize that, that's when you're able to really tap into self-love and that body positivity because your confidence is going to be out of this world. And that's why the 12 steps to your body of gold book it's really the ultimate guide to you embracing self-love and mastering your health. Because even when I go through the steps, it's not cookie cutter steps. I'm not simply just giving you a nutrition and fitness plan and saying, here, go accomplish it. I'm literally outlining the 12 steps that it really takes to accomplish self-love and then adopting a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, sorry, that makes a lot of sense because I mean, so many times during you know my journey, it was I reminded that hey, Carlo, you could be on the best diet, buddy, but if you don't keep it up, or if you don't have the right mindset, or if you don't, sometimes I even felt like if I didn't share what I learned that day, I felt like it was going to bite me. So I had to share, you know, just for good karma purposes, right? And and I knew that, and you, it makes a lot of sense because you, I have been on the right diet in the past, but it did not work, or it did work only for a year. You know, why, yeah. why is it not worked for five years? But this time now this has worked because along this journey now, somewhere along the road, I realized my self-worth, like you said, or maybe I've, you know, fed, fed yourself with enough love that you now have enough confidence to, to maintain that because yes. like you say, you're going to need that love to, to get to your goal, right? Yeah. It's, it's not just a one day thing. You need to always love yourself every morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it, it speaks volumes to me because there was times, I mean, during weight loss, people say, you know, when you're losing a lot of weight, sometimes you, you shed off some emotions along the way. And I think I really did, honestly. And there was times where I was even looking back and thinking, oh my God, you know, why was I worried about this? Or why was I worried about this? Or, or you know, or even times where you think you had confidence in the past, but then when you finally get real confidence, like, wow, this is what real confidence is, you know, yes, where you can, you can exactly. play a game when you're young, but when you get older, you start looking in the mirror and it's, you can't, yeah, that game starts, uh-huh. can't, no more bullshit as you get older, right? Yeah. And that's, and that's what confidence is all about because I always tell people the truth of the matter is, is that life is going to hit you. Yeah. You can lose all the weight. You can be on these amazing diets. You can accomplish your health and wellness goals. But at the end of the day, life is going to hit you, which as a result, that really puts a hit on your mental health. And because it puts a hit on your mental health, it can put a hit on your relationship with food. And it can turn you back into some of those bad habits that you've had. And so if you do end up gaining some of the weight back, because if you're anything like me, 
there's people who go through stress or go through things in life that just that they end up gaining weight and it's not simply because that you know they're eating bad foods it's because that's how their body reacts to stress yeah, it's a coping mechanism yeah yeah it's a coping mechanism for their bodies and same thing with a person that goes through stress and instead of gaining weight they actually lose weight and it's not the fact that they're not eating or not eating the right foods it's just that's how they their body reacts to stress reacts to what's going on and i always tell people that the truth of the matter is, is that even when you fall off the wagon, even when you fall off, you know, your healthy lifestyle for a month or maybe even two months or maybe even three, because something in life just, like, just hit you all hard and it devastated you to your soul. You know exactly what you need to do to get back on track, yeah. to begin living that healthy lifestyle again. Why? Because the tools, the strategies, and that mindset will always be instilled in you you just have to get over that hump and you will still always have that confidence once it's actually built and when you gain that weight you can still look in the mirror and say i am worthy i am beautiful and you can still look at your curves your stretch marks your flabby arms the fat on your back the fat around your neck and say you know what this is me right now but this is not the man or woman that I'm about to become in the future. I know that there's more for myself, but in the meantime, I'm going to love me for me and continue to work on me. Mm-hmm. Because once again, if you know that you're worthy, if you know that you have the confidence, can nothing stop you from continuing to work on you and doing better. You always try and find a way and seek a way to accomplish that goal. So I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm all for it. That's why I promote body positivity so hard. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm all for it as well. I do have another tough, might be a tough question, but where, where do you find that balance? Because, and I think you touched on it a little bit, but you know, there's a balance on one, on one hand, we're, we, we love ourselves, right? And we're taught to love ourselves because it is important. It's just in the grand scheme of things, aside from our, our weights and everything. But on the other side, we want to definitely, um, you know, better ourselves. So I think you touched on it, but where do we find that balance? And then you know, how do we make sense of a lot of the noise in between? Because I think a lot of people, you know, they say, well, you know, I have been, I was 300 pounds plus for 25 years, right? Mm-hmm. Or 20 plus years. So I, on one hand can say, um, yeah, I know, you know, big is beautiful or whatever. Um, right. Although I never really felt comfortable being, being, you know, big. I, I may have right. seemed like I was comfortable with it, um, but it was never like my ideal. Right. Um, but where do you find the balance? And, and, and when it comes down to, I think what you're probably gonna say is health, but where do you find that balance? I guess is my question. Yeah. So I think a lot of times people look at this, phrase body positivity as a way of like promoting obesity um and that's not actually the case it's not you know promoting obesity because you just hint you know you kind of hinted on that before with you asking this question about finding the balance and saying you know i'm curvy i'm beautiful i love my curves um but then i know i have to work out and eat right and so where does that balance come from one it comes from you really knowing that you being body positivity, body positive, body positive, sorry. Um, one, it really comes from you knowing that body positive and you being body positive, does that mean that you're also promoting obesity? So if you are over 200 pounds or 300 pounds and you're confident with your weight and you love yourself wholeheartedly, Again, you're not promoting obesity. Why? Because when it comes to this phrase called body positivity, there are a lot of thin people who are also insecure about their bodies and not feeling like they are enough simply because they don't have curves or enough fat on their bodies and people are also making fun of them as well gotcha. so i just wanted to throw that out there no i'm glad you did so you clarified it's it's just the individual really it's not comparing yourself to anybody yeah. it's, it's just the individual yeah and how you love yourself and the reason why body positivity is so focused on curvier people or plus size people is simply because we've been bashed for being this way for years and the media has portrayed that your body has to really look one way and so when i go into these classrooms that i speak to because i speak to young girls a lot of the more slimmer girls say i have an issue when it comes to body positive body positivity because i get teased 
with people saying that I'm too thin and that I need to gain weight. Okay. And that's what made me open my eyes and say, okay, this is not about promoting obesity. Everywhere. It's really just about loving the skin that you're in wow. and being confident and knowing that you still can be active and be an athlete. But to really answer your question about finding that balance between loving yourself and saying, girl, I'm curvy. I love my body. I love that on my body versus you, you know, trying to eat right and trying to get better. Where do you find that balance? The way that I think that people should find the balance at is honestly, <laughs> they go together. And so it's so crazy because I just put this like on my content list. I said, this is why body positivity and health shouldn't just coexist. Because I think right now they just coexist. They're around each other. Because you see a lot of ads nowadays with Nike or Adidas. They have, you know, different body representation. Mm -hmm. But we, we're still in this phase where body positivity and health coexist. So it's like, honestly, there shouldn't be necessarily a balance. They should come together. They should be together. It should be one thing, really, is what you're they saying. Yeah. One thing, body positivity and health equals self-love. That's it. Um, you can't, there shouldn't be, I have to be one or the other. So, yeah, so that's like marrying the, the physical health and the mental health almost. Yeah, right? it's just all about, yes, you said it. It's just about marrying the mental health and physical health component together. Because the way I look at it is that because you're so body positive, body positive and you love your body for what it is, you're then going to want to do right by your body. Mm -hmm. So as a result, you know, if you had a candy bar or you've been eating crap for the past two, three weeks, you know, you're going to feel like crap, you know, and, and that'll make you feel right. You know, you're constipated, you're lightheaded, yeah. your energy is so low. But you know, because I have this confidence of loving my body wholeheartedly, I'm going to balance that out. And, you know, I could still, you know, have my little chocolates here and there. But for the most part, I'm eating whole foods because I know how that crap makes me feel versus I shouldn't consume that junk food because I don't want to gain any more weight and I'm trying to lose weight. Gotcha. That's a different mentality. The why is different, right? The why, yeah. The, the why is so totally different. And I talk about, you know, the weight loss mentality versus the champion mentality. Okay. The weight loss mentality is the person who always feel like they got to lose weight in order to go out, in order to wear that bathing suit, in order to have fun with their spouse, in order to run around with their kids, in order to, you know, it's always like my weight is stopping me from living my life. I have to lose weight first before I can enjoy my life. Versus the champion mentality is someone who knows how to combine the mental aspect and the health aspect together. And they're not necessarily concerned about whether I'm 300 pounds or 200 pounds. Yes, it's in the back of their mind, but they're not going to allow that to stop them from living their life. And as a result of them learning how to mentally feel better and get better, they're going to do better by their body. So they're going to start to eat healthier. And because of them eating healthier, the weight loss is going to start to shed. Why? Because you're starting to live a more abundant and fulfilled life. So that's why I say there's really no balance. They should go, they should go together mm -hmm. and they should not coexist. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you're bomb. I'm sexy. I'm pretty. I'm curvy. But go in that kitchen, cut yourself an apple and have some oatmeal. Okay. <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah exactly still do what's right still use your brain still do what's right yeah that's that's the point still do what's right so that's why i was so that's why i was so excited when you asked this question because i'm like yeah. Yeah, i can finally say that me being body positive isn't promoting obesity i'm not saying that being over 300 pounds is okay mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that it's not okay exactly but i'm yeah. saying that is finding what's right for you mm -hmm. and with you being that size if you know you have a lot of health risk then you know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But with you knowing that you need to do, still have that mentality of self-love mm -hmm. because that you having that self-love is going to put you on the right track to doing better for your health. 
Exactly. And it sounds like what you're saying as well is that, I mean, essentially, I mean, if you love yourself enough, then you have no choice but to be truthful with yourself as well. And that's the thing, right? You're being honest. You're like, no bullshit. I can't lie to myself anymore. This is who I am. Love me or hate me. But like you said, love yourself and then to do better. But yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, you can't look yourself in the mirror and lie. Yeah, you can. And I I say that in the, in my book, the first step, I say, you must admit. I say, you must admit, you must admit that something is wrong that something isn't right and it's okay to take your time and try to figure it out that's why i'm here and that's why people like you have this platform because the thing is it's not a race it's a marathon it's a marathon Mm -hmm. it's know that you got this and every day as long as you're working to improve your health for the better then you you'll be set you can still improve your health like it's, it's never too late never too late Awesome. Absolutely. Like I said, you know, it's funny, you know, we all, every decade, it seems like they say, you know, 30 is the new 20, 40 is the new 30. I'm waiting for 50 right. to be the new 40, but I'm in my 40s. So I'm okay with my 40s for now. <laughs> um, so Farrah, thank you so much for all your, I mean, your, your story, your advice. Is there, is there a couple, maybe, maybe a, a tip or two, you know, I mean, your book, your 12 steps, of course, I mean, definitely is going to be great, yeah. but there may be a, like a one, maybe tip or even like a, maybe a, a parting word for our listeners or our viewers to kind of say, you know, we just to recap, you know, we've, we've touched on and we've talked about the, you know, the self-love and the importance of self-love and, and, and I think I can agree with you hundred percent. It's essential, right? It's the foundation. Mm-hmm. We need it and we need to keep on fueling and, and feeding that love and loving ourselves, right? right? To ensure that that fuels us. Um, but yeah, is there anything that maybe you can parting words for, for our listeners and our guests? And like I said, thank you again for sharing. It's been great. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. But one thing I will say is it's not about the number on the scale. It's all about living your life green. And the reason why I say that is because if you learn how to live your life green, then the number on the scale will eventually decrease and you're worried less about that. So that's a way that you can easily manipulate your mind and say, it's not about the number on the scale. It's just all about living my life green. And now I got to ask you the next question. What exactly do you mean by green? Or my listeners are going to email me and say, what is this lady talking about? (laughs) So when I say living your life green, you know, when we think of the, when we think of the color green, because my last name is green. But when we really think of the color green, we often associate green with health. We often associate the color green with, you know, the earth, we often associate with the color green with nature. Um, we often associate the color green with, you know, really um, joy, happiness, and and laughter. Usually when you see the color green, there's really no negativity around that color versus you seeing the color black. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I like that you, green. I like that. Yeah. So when you see the color green or when you think of, okay, how to live my life green, I'm not talking about recycling either, y'all, because I'm not doing that too. Um, That's a different podcast. <laughs> right? That is a whole different podcast. But when I mean living your life green, I really mean like living your life wholeheartedly, living your life to a point where your health comes first, your health becomes a priority, and it is a priority. You're not putting yourself last because you're the caretaker for everyone. You know, we oftentimes put ourselves last because we take care of our mom, our parents, our kids, our spouse. And it's like, no, make your health a priority. That means, you know, working out at least three times a week if you can. That means eating the right foods, um, eating whole foods, trying different recipes, um, cutting back on meat, maybe being a pescatarian, incorporating plant-based meals into your, you know, diet, eating less out and more at home to save money. Um, you know, that, that's what I mean by living your life green. And then it just really stems from you also to fighting to prevent diet related chronic illnesses. Cause that's, what's really killing us, you know, nowadays. So when I say that color green, or when I use green, just know it's coming from a real happy, sincere and wholesome place that I mean, just be healthy. Well, that's just awesome. Being healthy. I love it. And those are beautiful words. Thank you so much, Farrah. And beautiful message and your story. I love it so much. How can people find you? How can they get a hold of you? Please share. Yeah. So um, you can follow me on Instagram at 
Farrah M. Green underscore. Again, that's Farrah, like Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> so <laughs> Farrah M. Green underscore on Instagram. Also, you can find me at Thick, Bold, and Healthy. That is the name of my company because I cater to a lot of um, curvy women that are looking for an outlet in order to get healthy. And um, you can also go to my website at thetbhlife.com. That's thetbhlife.com. And there I have apparel as well as my books. And we also, later this year, or um, sometime this year, we will be launching our Everything Plus app. So be on the lookout for that. And just follow me to stay connected and subscribe so I can continuously teach you guys about body positivity, wellness, nutrition, mindfulness, and self-love. And lastly, I do want to say that I also have a podcast called The Body of Gold Podcast. And so you can definitely check that out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Radio Republic, and Google Play. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Farrah, so much. Uh, We'll circle back with you hopefully in a few months when the app is ready. We'll have you back on again. I hope so. Yes, definitely. Thank Thank you you so much. All right. It's been a great time and uh, you have a good night. You too.